Hey, it's JC here at JC's Comics and More, your pop culture superstore at 6725 West Central Avenue. That is Toledo, Ohio, 436-17-419-531-6097. Of course, the website is www.jccomicsandmore.com. Um, still doing some processing. We're taking care of the Captain Americas here. We'll try to go through these things rather quickly. Uh, we got Captain America 103, uh, Jack Kirby, Stan Lee. You look at the back cover here, you see the uh, the front cover does extend to the back a little bit, so you get a lot more of the artwork. But uh, it's great stuff. Him and Sharon Carter, they're having dinner. Uh, everything seems to be okay. And the Red Skull kidnaps Sharon Carter, not realizing, because she wanted to use her as bait to get Captain America. Not realizing that was Captain America, and he tells his... Uh, you know, some of his henchmen, you unmigrated fool! That was Steve Rogers, it was Captain America himself, but we did not know. You know, that's the problem with micromanaging people. But, uh, great book here, and got his great ads, caps underwater, he's got this device, this oxygen cylinder that uh, Tony Stark uh, developed. It's really great unless you, uh, you know, drop it out of your mouth or something. Um, great t missile firing tank ads uh, again Cap has to go after Sharon and he gets a piece of nuclear tape on the back of his neck which makes him the uh, unwitting slave of the Red Skull who uh, has a detonator that could destroy him at the touch of a finger and he's got his his group of uh of heathens that uh, buddies, bad guy buddies with uh, these these guys are no good. They're they're outcasts and uh, throwbacks to uh, World War II. Sharon Carter, uh, she's got her uh, stuff from Shield and she's got her middle finger blaster that she uh, can get cut through cut through metal, cut through a door. These great ads here. Fear no one get steel muscles quickly. Super isometrics. Uh, 25 different China, uh, big value, uh, better U.S. approvals, 20 different triangles, I miseries, poems wanted, uh, Stan the Man, okay, stop nagging us, here it is, an autographed photo of Stan the Man Lee, our answer to Ivan Forbush, you could have sent that in for one measly dollar, 1,000 tricks, You've got bike decals, bunny decals. You can be taller in an instant. Play guitar in seven days. Again, he fights the skull. The skull planned on him winning. You know, he talks about how he's superior in every way. A member of the master race. There is no master race, and you know it. We're all human beings, all equal before our creator. Nothing you can say or do or ever change that. Equality, you fool. Equality is just a myth. A myth, is it? America itself is a myth. As our liberty and justice and faith miss our free men willing to die and willing uh, to die for, uh, that he realizes the skull realizes that he tricked him. You got the Marvel bullpen bulletins again. These things are great. Talks about the spectacular Spider-Man comic, uh, or rather magazine. Here they've got a plea to keep your letters no more than one page each, and there's the ad. Uh, house ad for the spectacular Spider-Man. This was actually Spider-Man's second series, but unfortunately only lasted two issues. This was in black and white with a color cover, a painted cover. Then we've got Captain America 107. Again, you've got these uh, this atlas of evil that the uh, Red Skull surrounds himself with. Slave of the Skull. He's fighting some LMDs. Again, get through this pretty quickly. Trying to make this not be 30 minutes with all of these, but they probably will be. Uh, here we got the house ad in the back of, of this issue, issue 104. Another house ad for Spectacular Spider-Man 1, the magazine. And a house ad for Silver Surfer number 1, his own king-size magazine at last, by Stanley and John Basama. we got Not Brand Eck, uh, house ad for issue number 9. Uh, it talks They talk about how the letters page hasn't been cut back to one page. It's just they had something else that they needed to uh, put in this this issue. Uh, there shows Cap, and again he uh, 
it goes up against that axis of evil and he is victorious as Captain America usually always is. You got this Cap 105, you look at that great cover. You got the red letters, you've got this this yellow, and it just pops. And it's got this gloss to it, as do these other issues. Nice gloss to these covers. You got Bat Rock, you've got uh, the Living Laser, and you've got the Swordsman all going up against Cap. And you look at this, you got this first page here Cap and Bucky fight Nazis. You look at this, uh, this splash page. You gotta wonder what the original art for this splash page, if it still exists, what does this thing sell for? 60, 70, 100, 200,000, 300,000? Man, all kinds of, uh, all kinds of cash you could, if you had that. You've got this axis, this new uh, group of, of evil. You've got the living laser and bat rock, and uh, you know he's all pumped up because he's he's French. Ooh, his bat rock is the leader. Oh, relax, Frenchie. I just keep talking. And they try to take Cap down. Of course, Cap is always more than a match for him. I'll make him cry, Uncle, and I mean it before I polish him off. Let's see what kind of house ad do we have in this issue here. Just got a house ad for Marvel pillows and Marvel t-shirts. Yet again, the great bullpen bulletin uh, pages. And we move on to issue 107. Uh, Cap uh, having bad dreams yeah, about Bucky dying and about the war. If the past be not dead. It all happened years ago. Is it happening again? Is it? And he's having flashbacks about about the war, about losing Bucky. And then we have the first appearance of Dr. Faustus. Uh, as he seems to look all the time. Uh, Sid Shores uh, embellished this. But you've got you see Sharon Carter. She walks right past him and doesn't even doesn't even say anything. So Cap chases her down. But wait a second, it's not Sharon. But then we see that actually, yes, it's not Sharon. And it's not a cop. Some of uh, somebody, somebody getting uh, getting messing with Cap's mind with Dr. Faustus. You've got these Cheerios ads uh, that were very uh, educational. That were in a lot of these comics back in the 60s also. Cap needs some pills. Uh, from Dr. Faustus, did you bring my prescription? I got the pills right here. Don't stand there, man. Let me have them. See, Cap can't wait to pop him some pills. Look at him. He's taking those pills right now. He wakes up and he finds his hands have changed. He's become an old man. But Bucky's there. Somehow, Bucky's always there. And he has to fight Dr. Faustus. And got a House ads for Marvel King Size Special 2 and Hulk King Size Special 1, which the King Size Specials were just the annuals. We do have some, some very bad browning there. Issue 108 with the Trapster. Uh, taking a little bit of a break from the Frightful Four. And don't call him Pace Pot Pete. The Snares of the Trapster. And Sid Shores, his inks on, caps, uh, on Kirby stuff was uh, very, you can you certainly tell about his inks. And he calls himself the Traps, Trapster, uh, Trapster Invincible Pace Gun. Uh, my many other new and supreme weapons make me the most powerful man in the world. I don't doubt that. Again, here we got a uh, another Cheerios ad about the, the bullet train running between uh, Tokyo and... What was it uh, Osaka? Uh, and there he's fighting the Trapster. Trapster's got his pace gun. He's trying to give Cap a face full. Now this book unfortunately does have these center pages are loose in this issue. But Cap is giving the Trapster what for? But he was wishing that the, uh, the FF was, was smacking him around again. Again, let's look at the we've got a uh, Norman Rockwell ad on the back, 
Here we've got a house ad for Spectacular Spider-Man number two, which was in full color with the Goblin. Got to get the house ads. You got this uh, this here, the world famous Society for Comic Art Research. Uh, they gave their awards out, and you get to see that Marvel had lots of uh, won lots of awards there. At issue 109, the origin of Captain America. Great classic cover. Again, Sid Shore is doing his artwork. Uh, got in the back here, got this house ad for Amazing Spider-Man 68 and Namor Submariner number 9. This kind of gives you a flashback. You get an origin of Cap, of how uh, he was just a skinny kid and he wanted to do more. So you have that all in this issue here. Got 112 called Album Issue. Cap was thought to be killed off. This is just a big flashback book here. Starts off with Tony Stark, Iron Man. Uh, art by Jack Kirby. And it goes through his history of uh, back in the 1940s and the villains that he fought. A nice, a nice, uh, a nice book there and how Bucky died. Uh, when uh, Zemo and the Submariner, Prince Namor, finding his body in the ice and tossing it. That was then found by the Avengers, and then Cap was a living legend, was back. And fighting Sharon Carter, the woman who he loved. Fighting the Fantastic Four Sleeper, and of course Leaper, Batrock, Swordsman, the Living Laser. And Cap always prevailed. And they thought that he was dead. Tony Stark's rest easy, soldier. You will be avenged. Got some artwork by Jim Stranko. Here we've got Marvel superheroes with uh, a Kazar story. And then also, you really can't see it, but several of these books do have these circulation numbers in there. And the circulation number, pretty interesting. Uh, 500,325 was the... Uh, was how many copies they printed to the most recent one to that filing. Uh, I think they sold 270, over 275,000 copies of these books sold, as opposed to about 30,000 copies for most issues these days. At issue 115, it's the badly water damaged issue. Uh, John Basama's doing the art. Uh, very, very good John Basama artwork. But uh, a lot of pages on the inside of this are uh, loose pages. Pretty much the entire uh, entire book uh, is loose on the inside, so this is this is a good reader's copy, but that's that's about it. But great, great job with some artwork. Then we go from John to uh, Gene Cohen. So the artists uh, changed pretty rapidly on some of these early issues. We don't have any of the Jim Stranko issues though. So Gene Cohen became the uh, the fourth artist, and this has the Falcon. This is not his first appearance. But uh, the second appearance there. And then you have somebody here. We're not, not exactly sure who he is. He's in disguise. We'll find out in the next issue. Got more house ads for Tower, Tower of Shadows. And uh, Thor taking on Galactus. Which everybody wants to see. Again, you got the training. You got the Falcons training by this unknown person. Uh, we got issue 124. This cover here. I want to say, uh, I almost want to say it's a Herb Tremp cover, but uh, but it might be Marie Severin might have uh, might have been involved with this cover also. Again, you got Gene uh, Gene Colon, you got Modoc in here. And he's got some some uh, android or cyborg that he calls him that he's fighting. This has some water damage also, and you do have another uh, circulation. Uh, statement in this issue as well if that's stuff that you like having and Sharon Carter's in there and she went against Cap's orders, Cap wanted her to be safe and she went out on her own and then Cap, of course, Steve is mad about that in issue 129 this has I don't know, paint or something that got onto it and this uh, certainly looks like Gene Colon maybe Gene Colon with John Romita uh, inks on it but Cap, Steve Rogers out trying to uh, see America, and you've got a uh, you've got an Arab prince uh, that's touring the Midwest. 
that of course the Red Skull wants to get uh, get a hold of. And Cap's just riding down the road without his, his mask, but with his uh, with his costume in full view. <coughs> Sometimes the secret identities weren't quite what they should have been in these uh, in these comics. Uh, I've got a house ad for Conan the Barbarian on sale soon. This is uh, predates Conan number one. So something that predates Conan number one there. Get issue 136. This has got uh, a Sal Basama cover. And uh, we're not sure who that's, what this gorilla. We, uh, we've got a mystery villain. But if you look at those guys there, those little yellow fellers, you probably know who that villain is. Look, it has an ad. You can learn to draw comics. And there's a, another circulation uh, statement. Uh, there's a house ad for Doctor Doom versus the Red Skull in Astonishing Tales. And uh, the artwork is not indicative to that, uh, to the book itself. Next issue, Spider-Man Strikes. Of course, they are fighting uh, the, uh, the Mole Mans in this issue. Okay, we're missing, that was issue 136, we're missing one issue through 137, so we've got 138, uh, the Spider-Man issue was a two-parter, this is the second part, and we can see the art is different once again, this is John Romita's artwork, so John Romita took over doing the book for a little while, and uh, there you've got House Ad for the Avengers and the Incredible Hulk, by, that was written by Harlan Ellison, and you've got Spidey, Spidey, of course, Spidey fighting the Falcon because the heroes always, always have little mismatches where they have to prove themselves uh, to each other. And you've got Stoneface, uh, that he's a villain in here, and uh, that trying to take over Harlem. Um, and the heroes have to stop him. Harry Osborn makes an appearance in here as well. Uh, we'll go to issue 140. This has the gray gargoyle in it. Gray gargoyle of uh, fought Thor and Iron Man recently, and then he got to fight uh, Cap this time. Uh, he could change uh, change victims to, to stone with his touch. Cap throws his shield. The gargoyle touches his shield. It goes back, and he can't, and can't uh, judge the uh, rate of speed, and it clocks him. And... Gargoyle in here, uh, the Falcon goes after him. He gets stopped by the Falcon. There's also a, a recap of his origin in there. Uh, he recaps the Falcon, and he's got a new chemical solution. Uh, so he's going to he's going to turn him into a living uh, slave using Element X. And we've got the second part of that. You got a Hell Carrier. They're going into one of Shield's uh, fortress, mountain fortresses. They're trying to take that down. In the meantime, uh, look at that. Look at that. The Hell Carrier is just that's spectacular. The artists these days, they don't know how to draw Hell Carriers. But uh, the Falcon was under control of the Great Gargoyle, so Cap not only has to fight the Gargoyle, but he has to fight his partner as well. And look who's here. It's Arnold. Mr. Schwarzenegger makes an appearance there. Uh, he also did appear... A couple of issues earlier, uh, let me see if I can find if this is the issue. Uh, he's not named as Arnold Schwarzenegger there. Uh, he's just a guy selling power bands. So there was one of the other issues earlier. There he is on the uh, bullpen bulletin page. You have it, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's holding up a pretty girl, and uh, he's just getting Hollywood. But here you've got him selling these power bands, the hell bent for leather. Lead, leather and lead brace, bracelets. And I wanted those as a kid because they make your arms big. Uh, here we've got Captain America and the Falcon. They split up. We've got Hydra. We've got a backup story. Backup story is with art by... Look, there's Tricky Dick Nixon. There's Agnew. Or is that Joe Biden? Uh, talks about the LMDs. But you got Gray Merrill doing the uh, backup stories. Uh, Nick Fury says that they need to go on vacation, so Sharon Carter is happy they're going on vacation. Um, but this here features the first look of the new costume for the Falcon. So that was an important issue. And there you got the Thumb Force, uh, which was uh, Shield's female force that uh, 
they they brought on, and you got Salva Sama doing the artwork now. Sharon Carter was hit and thought to be killed, but she was not killed. You got Hydra here. You got a new leader uh, behind Hydra, so we have to find out who is who is behind the new Hydra. And there, the supreme leader is unmasked, and. If you recognize, as they go into the story here, you might recognize this uh, this woman right here from another book. If you don't, well, it'll all become clear soon enough. Look, it's the kingpin, and then his friend, son Richard was the supreme leader of Hydra. But next to Big Sleep, we got another villain that is showing up. And guess who it is? It's the Red Skull. And the fifth sleeper has been awakened in Las Vegas. Uh... We have a bit of a mistake. You see the Kingpin wearing a brown suit at the end of this issue. It was a blue suit. Uh, colorists, uh, I'm sure, weren't towed, and, and mistakes were, were made like that. But they've got to fight the uh, the fifth sleeper. Uh, again, Salva, some artwork, but you can see that there is some John Romita inks in some of this here. That John was not credited with the inking job on this. But... Uh, that is the uh, the inks uh, that we have, and the fifth and final sleeper right there. And then we go to issue 150. Has the stranger in this. This is a badly water damage issue. Uh, so again, a good reader's copy. Captain America: One at Dead or Alive. This features the return of the 1950s Captain America, who was not a good person. So. Uh, we have to have to deal with with that Captain America in in these issues here. So Cap was on vacation with Sharon Carter and has to come back and fight the the uh, the Cap and the Bucky from the 1950s. Now the Bucky ended up becoming Nomad years later. An ad or a house ad for the Cat, but it gives the Got a little bit of flashback from uh, Young Men Comics number 24 also. Got issue 156, where both caps have to fight. Final countdown, or final countdown, Mayhem over Miami. Got a Frankenstein ad for the new Frankenstein comic that's coming to Marvel. But Cap, uh, Cap prevails as he always does. Issue 159, uh, Turning Point, uh, Serpent Society is fighting fighting Cap in this issue here. And as you can see, there is yet another circulation uh, uh, listing in there. At issue 161, The Return of Dr. Faustus. And uh, another character who is going to be returning that uh, we don't find out quite yet in this issue here. But... Sharon Carter is in this one here. And then Cap goes mad again. You got Dr. Faustus in here. Uh, we find out that it's Peggy Carter. Peggy Carter was brought back in this issue here. And it talks about Foom. I think maybe this issue here, perhaps, has a full page. There's a full page house ad for Foom. Friends of Old Marvel. And then also, it's got Dracula Lives, lives uh, house ad. So we've got 163, again, you've got the Serpent Squad, you've got the Viper, the Eel, and Cobra, who's then going by King Cobra. Beware of Serpents. The day Bill towed off his boss. You've got House Ads for Monsters Unleashed and Haunt of Horror. Issue 165, bringing back the Yellow Claw. That uh, he fought Nova many, many years later. Got Savage Tales, but uh, fighting the Yellow Claw, Salva Summit did the artwork. Then they have to fight the uh, Living Mummies, which uh, the Yellow Claw brought on. Got a house ad for Son of Satan. Son of Satan uh, in Marvel Spotlight number 12. I believe there was a uh, house ad in one of these other comics. Let's see here. Was it this issue? There we go. Got a house ad for Brother Voodoo. Hey, Paul. Dutch Paul. There you go. Brother Voodoo. And also, it does have in here, uh, it talks about Bill uh, Everett uh, passing away. Then Sid Shores. And then one of these other issues, uh, he passed away. 
and I talked about that right there about Sid Shores passing away. But we've got uh, the Phoenix, who ended up being the son of Baron Zumo, who became uh, the new Baron Zumo, and of course was in the Thunderbolts with Citizen V. Got the Tumblr that's back. The Black Panther makes an appearance in this issue here as the Panther goes to hang out with the Black Panther. Uh, issue 170 is important. Has uh, the Panther in there. And look, it's Stone Face is back. Oh, Stone Face is back. Uh, also, we do have the... we got Master of Kung Fu. Uh, let's see, where is it at here? With the Falcon. It might be... There we go. Got the Falcon's new costume with his wings that actually makes him fly. And then we've got... Uh, we've got the Banshee back in this is issue here, and we start to have Marvel uh, value stamps. We've got the Enchantress, we've got a house stamp for FF 150, 145. The X Men do make an appearance in this issue also. X Men make an appearance in the next several issues. Then we've got Nick Fury and the Falcon, they come back. And we've got house stamps for issue one, uh, number with the, uh, the Red Ghost, and another uh, circulation numbers. Got the Secret Empire in here, and you've got this great ad here. If you have these things, you know they're very cool. These Marvel medallions. Spider Man's pretty pretty easy to find. Invincible Spider Man, Incredible Hulk, and Conan the Barbarian. The Hulk and the uh, Conan ones aren't as easy to find. Uh, there we have a uh, got the house stamp for Doctor Strange number one. You got Craven Marvel value stamp. Talks about why they're raising the prices with the paper shortage uh, back then. Uh, I got issue 175. This has the Secret Empire in this one also. And you've got Giant Size Super Teams, which uh, just became Giant Size Defenders. Uh, and the Marvel value stamp is the Swordsman. And this is a big flashback issue where Calf gives up and eventually becomes Nomad. Uh, we go back through, retells his origin again. There's some slight differences from the early uh, origin retellings. Got a house there for giant size Spider Man with Dracula. And then we get issue 179 where uh, uh, Cap has decided not to become. Uh, Steve has decided that he's not Cap anymore, and the Golden Archer uh, goes after him. Uh, we find out that the Golden Archer is actually Hawkeye. They're trying to uh, show Steve that you don't have to be Captain America, you meet somebody else. And then we see here Nomad, a man without country, uh, which is what it became. And then you got your Marvel value stamp with uh, Quicksilver. It's Marvel value stamp number 52. And then I've got Cap Super Size or King Size Specials, uh, King Size Special 1 and Special 2. These are reprints. Uh, this reprints a bunch of the early um, Tales of Suspense stuff, Kirby stuff, the origin of Captain America. This number 2 is special because it's a rare double cover. I've got two covers on this issue, so it makes that rare, and that's a bunch of bunch of reprints in that issue also. But if you like these uh, these videos, as you just heard the bell, and look, there's another Arnold Schwarzenegger ad in these things too. Uh, if you heard the bells, that means uh, you know hit the uh, hit the bell for notifications and like the subscription. And you've got the uh, you not from not Brian Eck, the Revengers with Charlie America with uh, Gene Cohen doing some very funny. Uh, satirical artwork. This is this is great. But other than that, thanks much and have a good afternoon.